Hello everyone. Hi. In our last video, we talked about the team charter and ground rules. This is our seventh video. Today, we will explain the techniques used in creating the team ground rules. Yes. The main techniques are negotiation skills, communication between internal and external team members, conflict management, and brainstorming. Okay, Mr. Izgi. First, can you please tell us why negotiation skill is important while creating ground rules? Negotiation <clears throat> is a discussion where the aim is reaching agreement. We want that the ground rules are established with agreement. Since the aim of the negotiation is reaching an agreement, the effective way of generating the ground rules is conducting negotiations. There are, of course, other cases where negotiation is helpful, uh, such as identifying roles, responsibilities, priorities, assignments, deliverables, and so on. Everyone should develop good skills in negotiation. Let's give some examples about negotiation phrases. When we are discussing with each other, we use those phrases. And to become a good negotiator, a person should know their meanings. One of them is called the delay method. Can you tell us, Mr. Izgi? Yes, Mr. Tekir. It aims to relieve the pressure. For example, a person might tell you, I don't have detailed information on this subject. I will talk to the relevant person and then inform you. Another method is called doomsday. What is this? The aim is to convince the other person how bad the options considered are. Then one offers another alternative to be looked at. For example, somebody can say to you, doing projects A and B would be devastating for our company. During the crisis we have now, we should definitely give much more importance to project C. Okay, now let's define the complement method. Yeah, if one uses this method, then the other party is flattered in order to get some profit. For example, in a store where you try a dress, the salesperson might say, it looks so good on you that I think you'd better not take it off. It's as if it was soon just for you. Our next negotiation method is force to choose. Yes, here one forces the other party to make a choice between two alternatives where both of the choices are bad. The other party might say to you, due to the economic crisis, we will either cut the salaries in half or lay off half of the company staff members. Which one would you prefer? Okay, now in our list, the next one is Increased communication. Yeah. For example, one talks to the team members to agree on certain issues before meeting with the parties. This way, there will be less conflict during the meetings. Okay. Now let's define our last technique, which is called supplement player. One continues the negotiation by including a person who has much more expertise. For example, you might hear a sentence like, a friend from our IT department will be with us in a while. Well, actually, there are much more negotiation techniques available, but we covered the most important ones. Okay, Mr. Izgi, we know a project manager needs to spend her time communicating to create a general understanding of a team charter. What about the team members? 
just the same Mr. Tekir, externally or internally. The team will need to have regular communications with stakeholders outside the team. In addition, part of an effective team charter includes communications protocols inside the team, such as team meetings, shared calendars, and so on. While we are communicating or negotiating, to be in a conflict is inevitable. So for a project manager, conflict management is another technique to create a team charter, isn't it? Yes. Conflict can arise because of many issues like scheduling, responsibilities, and so on. Of course, it can arise while we prepare a team charter too. What is conflict management? It is the application of strategies for dealing with disagreements. For example, a team may have conflicts about meeting hours, meeting place, or collecting methods of actual data for performed tasks. Effective conflict management will lead to improved understanding, performance, and productivity. Okay. Our last technique to create a team charter is brainstorming. We will talk about in more detail in future videos, but let's try to understand how brainstorming is useful to create a team charter. Uh, yes, brainstorming is working with people to identify potential solutions to a problem and then performing analyses to assist selecting the most appropriate ones. During the preparation of the team charter, this type of work is an efficient way to prepare this document. Because ideas of team pampers can be discussed and one can choose the best ones. So the team members realize that they are part of the decision-making process and their ideas are respected. Yes, in addition to ground rules, PMI has code of ethics and professional conduct. Could you please tell us what we should understand from this? It describes the ethical and professional behavior expectations from project managers and other project stakeholders. The most important values are responsibility, respect, fairness, and honesty. Although there are many, these four are considered the most important ones. Just look at the link we include in the description section of this video in case you want to have more detailed information. Thank you, Mr. Rizgi. We have reached the end of our video. Thanks to the people watching us. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and like our videos. Hope to see you in our next video. We'll be glad if you write your comments below our videos. Also, feel free to ask any questions you might have. Contact us using our email addresses if you are interested in our courses. Goodbye.